Dostoevsky wrote in The Idiot, my favorite of his books, through uh, the main character, Prince Mishkin, that beauty will save the world. These words, seemingly naive, and ultimately, at least to me, profound, what do they mean to you? Beauty will save the world. Naive? Really? I don't even seem naive at all. Well, uh, Solzhenitsyn actually, for his 1970 Nobel Prize uh, speech, talked about this line a lot. And he thought for most of his life that was a silly line. There was just words thrown out there because with all the suffering that's in the world, what has beauty actually ever done? Oh but, my God, I hate this so much. <laughs> I, 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 talking I, trash about soldiers. Yeah, I am. Okay. Um, and this is perfectly sets up this theme. You know, I said, let's do this episode, start the new year on a positive note, give people hope, give people joy. Uh, you and I both have friends who are models, right? And it's a silly profession to some extent, of course, but you are actually a model. I am, you are my friend. I, I am, that's right. That's true. I am under a model. I was trying to be subtle, but for those people who actually, you know, deserve to be models, um, when you look at someone who is a model and in some of their photos, and these they these people look perfect. Now in real life, they're not perfect. They have flaws. They'll be the first to admit it, so on and so forth. But when you look at beauty, it is almost impossible to maintain a sense of cynicism and hopelessness. Because if there's even one moment when some uh, element of perfection has been actualized, if there's one moment where a beauty has been realized and captured, you can't say, well, it's never going to happen again. So I think beauty, it means hope. I think I hate that cynical idea of like, um, I, I get, I, I appreciate Solzhenitsyn's broader point in that a lot of times people, there's something called a deepity where people throw words together to sound profound. And if you take it apart, like this is just complete gibberish. I don't think this is an example of that. I think beauty inspires and it more importantly, it proves to you this is something that can actually happen on this earth. Plato, right? The platonic theory of forms, like this world is imperfect, but these perfect forms exist in another dimension, and that's where our concepts come from. You know, he, he was an early uh, person trying to figure out where our concepts come from uh, and epistemology and so on and so forth. Um, but that is something that is real in here. So I completely disagree with uh, his analysis of that. And I don't know if it'll save the world, but it's certainly a prerequisite. And what's the point of fighting for your values if you don't want to make the world a more beautiful place? Well, it's also how you define beauty, because beauty could be just aesthetic beauty, it could be art. Of course, art could, be, could uh, encompass a lot, a lot more than just literature and paintings. It can encompass the full life, the full dance of life. But then beauty could be something just uh, deeper, like whatever that awe you feel when you pause and hear the music, just hear and like look up at the stars. Like for some reason, when I see rockets go up, for me, it's like science. What is that? The awe that we're able to accomplish that as humans. You know, that's funny because, you know, there's lots of different schools of thought, like th these people versus these people and, and you know, maybe vegans versus um, steakhouse people. I think in terms of the sciences, and I guess you and I would be on opposite sides here, mm -hmm. you have the astronomy people versus the zoology people. Like the, the big question is, would you rather spend 10 minutes on the moon or would you rather spend 10 minutes in the deep sea? And for me, it's clearly the deep sea. Um, the zoology that's down there, uh, there's something I would encourage people to look up uh, called deep staria, which is a jellyfish. And the, the scientists, it's, it, what's amazing when you watch these deep sea dives on YouTube is that the scientists are, they're, they're nature dorks like everybody else. They're, they're, they went into this field and there's none of this maybe Solzhenitsyn style cynicism of when they see an amazing animal in its natural environment you know, exhibiting these crazy behaviors, they lose it. They're yeah. on the mics like, oh my God. And like, it's so exciting to watch. So uh, I, I'm not a rocket person, but I'm definitely a zoology person. So, so animals and plants in the sea. There, and also it's, it's so mathematical. There's so much, so many forms. There's, there's this, um, there's this plant called Aerospermum titanopsoides, 
I don't know how to pronounce it because they're always in Latin. You never hear them pronounced. You said sperm. <laughs> Areospermum, yeah, because it's a woolly seed is the is the genus. Um, the leaf, it's just always puts out one leaf, mm -hmm. but the leaf is covered in little magnifying glasses, uh, lenses to make it maximize the sunlight. So it looks like this little crystal seashell. It's tiny. It's like two centimeters, but it's just this amazing thing that has, that grows out of the sands in South Africa.